you know, we did do a number of pieces of legislation this past year that would try to help deal with the budget shortfall. We have we had some revenue enhancement measures that we had passed. Um, obviously, we've looked at things like the Hurricane Relief Fund. Uh, we looked at the Rainy Day Fund. And, you know, these are all things that we're going to have to revisit again next year. Um, and so, you know, in addition, you know, we looked at, again, we, we scrubbed through the budget. Uh, this is a very lean budget that we passed this year. Um, Senator Baker did a very good job two years ago as Ways and Means Chair looking at vacancy savings and looking at, you know, um, ways to try to um, downsize the, the, the cost of, of, of government and so and while also still providing the, the, the services that we need you know within the community so there's a fine balance that we you know we try to um, strike and uh, hopefully next year you know we'll have another opportunity to revisit some of those issues one of the other things that we did is we looked at um, <coughs> the federal funds and we tried to find as many and as much federal funds as we could and encourage the administration to apply for those monies and sometimes we made state monies available so that it would be the matching that's needed to bring down the federal dollars. So, you know, for instance, with Medicaid reimbursements, um, we made, I think, $18 million available, which would then trigger a huge amount of federal monies to, for re medical reimbursements. So what's needed is for the governor then to release that $18 million to access that huge amount of money that the federal government's willing to give us. And, you know, in, in that regard, it, it looks like, you know, that's a, a huge chunk of dollars that we have uh, from the state, but it's that leveraging ability and those reimbursements go to our hospitals and the private sector to pay for un uncompensated care. So it's really important that we maximize all of the dollars that we have and make sure that they're circulating in our state to help uh, create jobs and um, generate more revenue for the state so that we can uh, mitigate that some of the terrible impacts that the budget shortfall is going to cause. You know, and Ellen, Senator Baker brings up a good point. I mean, the fact that we're trying to leverage additional dollars. So, you know, recently we've been looking to the private sector, looking to the community to look at projects where you can leverage state dollars with private dollars. And, you know, one example is Lahaina Luna. You know, they're taking a proactive uh, approach in terms of how to uh, build out the Lahaina Luna Stadium out in Lahaina, and they're willing to raise uh, uh, private money and have it match with uh, state money and I think that's something that you know next year we're going to seriously have to take a look at and that's just one example I think there are many many other examples out there that show that you know uh, people when times are tough I mean people are willing to dig deep and, and really help uh, move forward good community projects so you know we're going to say focus on issues like that um, you know your question about what have we done to try to help with the budget shortfall well one of the things that we've done in, in House Bill 200 was we allocated over 3.5 billion dollars of CIP funds and that's statewide and so you know by by the governor moving quickly doing her due diligence process and releasing those funds you know the sooner she releases those funds the sooner people get back to work and the sooner money starts flowing back through our economy so you know, I would, you know, encourage the governor at this point to, to look at what the legislature has done and, you know, and, and move forward as, as, on as many projects as possible. Because those projects are not make work projects. There's infrastructure projects that are very important. Just look at the uh, projects we have for Maui Memorial. It's to finish the helicopter bay. It's to complete uh, some of the other renovations that are needed there. It's to build more um, bed capacity in our long-term care, which will impact the wait list. So all of those kinds of things uh, generate other revenue as well as address an important need in our community. And one of the projects that we did include was $5 million for long-term care up in Kula, mm -hmm. in Senator English's district, which mm -hmm. he played a big role in getting those funds. But see, when we did that, we realized that although we were spending $5 million to build an additional bed space, we would save Maui Memorial mm -hmm. roughly $2.4 million a month in expenses by transferring those patients up to Kula. Because in Maui, we don't have enough bed space. So by, by creating the long-term care facility up, up country, we relieve Maui Memorial from having to keep people in acute care that actually belong in long-term care. So, you know, we looked at the big picture, and yes, it's $5 million, but it relieves a lot of other financial um, burdens elsewhere. And plus the reimbursement rates are higher, right? right? Exactly, exactly. If you have somebody in appropriate care, you're going to be reimbursed for that care rather than having them in an acute care setting but really only needing uh, other kinds of care, and so you're not going to be reimbursed at the level. Very nice, very nice. <laughs> My next question is, is about Maui. How will Maui be affected by the governor's announcement that she is planning layoffs to meet budget shortfalls? We're very concerned about those layoffs. 
um, because it appears that she is impacting a lot of our industries, whether it's uh, landscape, horticulture, the florists, the people that import uh, seafood, uh, pet food, um, any of any of the animals, any of the agriculture products, uh, because we're our inspection at the port is really going to be decimated. We have funding for our hair, airport, uh, at least Maui does, because the, hot, the airport special fund is paying for those inspectors. But Honolulu Airport is going to be, um, inspection is going to be decimated. It's, everything is just going to be backed up. It's really uh, very troublesome because this is an economic engine. You know, the, uh, the seed crop uh, industry is at least uh, 250 million. Uh, the nursery and landscape industry is about a hundred million. We've got cattle and and other ag products, so it's all of the revenue generating items for our uh, state that are on the chopping block. Right, it's, and you know it's like, for instance, orchid growers. I mean, just take the, the flower growers up country, or the onion growers, or the cabbage growers. You know, they need the inspectors, the ag inspectors, to certify that their products are meet the, the requirements have been expected are pests and bug free and they can come to Oahu go to the mainland without these inspectors the product doesn't move off the island so yes you know you may save a little bit in the state budget but the long term or the immediate <laughs> economic impact is great I mean basically we shut down one sector of our um, of our business society by taking out the inspectors so actually we're we're going to be doing a series of hearings in Maui we have one coming uh, on this Thursday uh, September the 3rd. September the 3rd. September yes. the 3rd, yes, September the 3rd uh, at 5 o'clock in Maui Waina uh, to look into this particular issue. And then we have another one uh, on the 9th uh, at 5 o'clock, and that's at Baldwin. Okay. 5 to 9 p.m. 5 time. So, you know, the Senate is taking a very proactive uh, approach to looking at the layoffs and looking at how the governor is going about doing this. What we need to do is ensure that, yes, we need to do some of the cuts, but we have to ensure that it has the least amount of impact on the services provided. Because some of these services you cannot just turn over to the private sector. Let me give you another example. We were just uh, awarded a sizable federal grant uh, to, to demonstrate how we might be able to deal with a rapid response for uh, H1N1 virus, the swine flu virus. But at the same time, the Department of Health is cutting a number of positions, public health nursing. Those are the individuals that we need to use to deploy these kinds of strategies. So it, it seems to me that a number of the decisions that the governor's uh, department heads and the governor is implementing are almost penny wise and pound foolish uh, because we're saving a little bit in the short term, but the impacts are very far reaching and not confined to just any one industry or any one segment of our community. It's running throughout the economy. You know, let's take the example of our libraries. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Hana was especially hit by this the round of closures. But when you looked at it, it was saving about $20,000. So the idea was, you know, okay, we save a little bit of money, but the impact to the community was so great. Um, you know, we managed to get the BOE to keep it off the list and understand now it's up for reconsideration to get back on the closures list. But, you know, we have to try and cut where it has the least impact on the general public. And, and the only way you're going to do that really is to have a um, collaborative approach. You know, we need to get everybody to the table. That's one of the reasons that we're going out with uh, public hearings is because we want to make sure the public is aware of the impacts and then they can tell us some of the impacts. I know on Maui, uh, a number of our Rotary Clubs sell Christmas trees as a fundraiser for all of the other community activities, scholarships uh, that they engage in. And Christmas trees, we anticipate, are going to be at the bottom of the list of things that are inspected. Um, everything's going to have to come through Oahu if these layoffs go forward. Uh, there are 24 inspectors left on Oahu, and there are 31 sites. And so we're being told, and we anticipate we'll get this confirmed uh, on Thursday, that the high priority is going to be food and all of these other things may fall by the wayside. So there may not be anybody to uh, permit microorganisms or other things that we need to do research at the Cancer Research Center or at the TROP Ag. So the, the, the impacts are really very far reaching and I don't know that they were completely thought through when it was announced that 
you know, you're going to destroy half of the p 